I want to cover the base fuel or the base settings of my GSXR1000R map. This is the actual map that I am running in my motorcycle right now. Uh, bike's very smooth, makes good power. The auto response is great. Uh, I've been tuning on it since I've had it. And this and whenever Woolwich came out with the actual log box and I could data, they actually did the data logging. And I will show you that in the advanced settings where Woolwich, my understanding is they wrote their own custom proprietary protocol to communicate or actually record to the ECU. You have to talk to Woolwich about that because I do not know that exactly and I'm kind of getting off topic. But this is like a year and a half to a year of logging or more to get this map right. Um, so I'm going to open up the configuration and just go through the configuration, advanced setting, and the limiters for tonight. Then I'll make a part two and a part three where I cover more of what I've done in my map. But tonight I'm just going to do the basic on how I set up the initial settings. I did auto-tune, I think a week ago, maybe a couple weeks ago. If you want to see what my auto-tune map looks like, watch that video. Uh, and it will show you I pretty much cover what I do there. All right, so on the unified fuel cylinder maps, I choose maintain cylinder offset. I do not choose an individual cylinder. If you look at the fuel maps with them out being unified, you'll see that the fueling is different per cylinder, and that's just because of the air distribution in the manifold, in the manifold box or the air box, and the way the exhaust header is shaped. That not each cylinder could possibly have the same amount of air in it. So. Suzuki did testing, modeling, and then they created fuel maps per cylinder, and each one is different, and I just say write the same percentage to each one, but maintain the cylinder offset so that balance does not get messed up. All right, so ignition map unification. I never do this. I never unify ignition group maps. I always leave them separate, and I do that because in the past, I get funky readings, especially if neutral is in there. Your neutral map ends up running more timing. Uh, I just don't do that. I never, I never unify ignition group maps. It just has been a bad experience. Um, so ignition cylinder maps. This is the same idea or concept as the fuel cylinder maps. Each one's a little different. Um, I maintain the offset between them, but write to them all at the same time when I make a change. Actually, though, interesting in this bike, I do not change the timing on this bike. I've yet to do it. I'm, I'm happy with the bike performs. I've seen tests where they don't really gain, <clears throat> gain any power, and I haven't tested yet to see if that's true. And right now, I don't have an interest in messing with timing. Timing is the quickest way to pretty much toast your engine is get crazy with the timing or get aggressive especially if it's already running at MBT or possibly all right so this is the configuration all right so I'm gonna cover the advanced settings all right so I choose eat generic and reason why I have generic is because I don't want it specified to a region that this is actually an Australian or European map that I, uh, that's why I chose. This is an Australian or European map that I choose generic so I can actually write to a U.S. ECU. At least that's how I understand it. Check with Woolwich. I'm not 100% sure, but that's why I choose generic. My fan temperature I have come on at 90 and 85 degrees Celsius. And I haven't touched this pit speed limiter RPM. This is default. All right, so I disabled a stock O2 sensor, and the reason why I do that is I am running a log box with this bike, so I'm continually monitoring AFR and right to a log. Uh, I don't want the stock O2 sensor trying to correct the map that I'm writing. I would rather just write to the fuel maps and have it run the map or run the fueling that I've programmed. All right, pair valves emissions, that's what the little reed valves that let air into the um, exhaust, I disable that. I disable the exhaust valve. I have full exhaust on here. 
on my bike, so there's no need to uh, have the exhaust valve trying to control or set the mode learning fuel light or malfunction light on the bike. I disable deceleration fuel cut, and what deceleration fuel cut is, when you close the throttle on the bike, it cuts the fuel off to save fuel, save gas, or it's, it's an emissions thing. What I found is that when you go to get back on the throttle, that initial turning on the injectors sometimes causes the bike to surge and it's a little bit jerky or rough. Um, this bike was not as bad as my ZX-10 was or my ZX-6, but I just go ahead and disable it. I'm not trying to get gas mileage out of the bike. I just want smooth throttle response and not a jerk. All right, this is more emissions. I disabled that. When I did the full exhaust, I disabled the EVAP, uh, the exhaust valve, and the pair valve, and the O2. All those I disabled. I'm not even sure my bike came with the EVAP canister because I have a U.S. bike, but as part of the European or the other maps, I went. I think I ended up having to disable it to keep my malfunction light or check engine light from coming on. All right, since it is a GSX-R1000R, this comes on by default. It does have the quick shifter auto blipper enabled. I left that on. If I was dynoing, I could check this to disable the front sensor to help it with the air codes or fault sensor, ABS, or traction control. Um, a pit speed limiter. I, this might be part of the... Uh, race tools because as far as I know this only has launch control so I don't know why this is here it's probably part of race tools for the regular 1000 if it's been added or it's for future all right so this last check box is for the logging to the log box where uh, Woolwich actually reads like TPS timing I think there's anyway it reads the ECU and it logs it to to the log box where you can review that log later into the data monitor or data viewer and see what's going on. Uh, I very seldom use that. I mean, most of the time I just apply the auto tune map because the auto tune map basically maps it to a cell. If I do have an issue with something going on, I will look at that, but it's very rarely the auto tune pretty much does all that for you. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is the limiters. I believe this has a 14.4 in the factory, 14,400 RPM in gear. Uh, this bike doesn't make power after 14,000, not from what I've seen. So in order to save the engine, not over rev it, no need for me to go with the extra 400 RPM. I actually have dropped the RPM or the limiter on this bike to 14,000. So if I start doing track days, if I add the MWR stacks or something to bring power up higher cams, I might, but truthfully, I don't ever foresee doing much more mods to this bike. All right, so the other things that you can do, which won't work here, you can read the diagnostic codes if you're connected to the log box. The log box actually has a flasher and you can interface this with the computer. Uh, engine data, you can actually read real time if you're connected, if you have these fill in. Now, this also shows you what the fast engine data, everything that gets logged as well, which is part of it. You can see it here. All right, so I think I'm going to conclude this video here. I want, like, this is just going to be part one for the basic settings. And then as I do part two or three, I will show my fuel maps and my ignition maps and my other maps or the electronic throttle valve maps and kind of get into what I've built here. I do have a partial one-to-one -one throttle, uh, but not entirely. And later on, I will show that as well.